Welcome once again, good friends. So we're still on um, unit one. Uh, earlier, I mentioned concepts like assurance, engagement, okay? Um, and we told you that audit is an assurance engagement. It's a type of an assurance engagement. We want to delve deeper into the concept of assurance engagement or the principles or theories of assurance engagement, okay? So this is quite, it looks like a long slide. I'll try to keep it brief and in two parts so that at least you can you can review them quickly uh, at your own pace, okay? I wouldn't want to keep it long. So I'll try and, and, and bridge them up, um, separate them into two parts, okay? So I share I share my screen on the, on the topic at hand. All right. So let me start from the onset. Okay. Good. All right. So we're looking at the concept of review engagement and other non-audit assurance um, engagement or assignments. Once again, this is more of a summary. Okay. So I would I would I would kindly expect that you you make you get copies of the book from the library. There are copies in the library, okay, in the various in the various campuses, and then try to better understand the theories. Okay, I will summarize them up quickly, and you should be able to have them make time to read them. Of course, the ACCA text is also there to support the study. Okay, so take note of of both books and then use them. So we're we'll looking at difference between review engagement, other non audit assignments. Forensic auditing, when you hear the word forensic, then talking of law, legal, something which has to do with some criminal activity, okay? Um, we then understand the level of work to be undertaken in each type of assignment, okay? They may not be audits, but they still require the same skills and technical know-how which an auditor would use, okay? We may have had reasonable assurance, which normally runs through the concept of auditing. But what about limited assurance? We'll look at that. <clears throat> then sometimes we want to issue a positive or negative assurance report. So reporting is coming in now, but we'll look at reporting later. But we'll just look at the wording of these, okay? And then we we'll differentiate between prospective financial information, a forecast, and a projection. I would not talk much about this forecast and projection. I would want you to read about it, okay? So in one of them, you realize that, or even in both of them, there's the use of assumptions, but one of them goes ahead to look at a mix of hypothetical situations and an assumption. So I will not dwell much on the difference between prospective financial information, um, a forecast and a projection. They are different. Look at them, okay? And then how to modify reports. Uh, also, touch on that one briefly, but you will do more. Two types of assurance services exist. We have the reasonable assurance, like I said, which we normally find within the scope of audit, financial audit, statutory audit, okay? And then we have limited assurance, which is normally in the area of review engagements. Now, what are these, what's the definition of these non-audit assignments or engagements? Like I said, they are not audits, they are not financial audits, but they use similar skills, similar technical know-how. We normally don't give assurance over these reports. And they include attestation engagements or review engagements, um, agreed upon procedures and due diligence um, activities and compilation assignments. Usually we don't have international standards on auditing which govern these non-audit engagements. We use more of our professional judgments and know-how. But remember, they actually governed by the international um, standards on review engagement, ISREs. So though not strictly with the ISS, uh, ISREs govern them. Now, look at the difference between these three, non-audit services or non-audit engagements. We will touch on some of them in detail, not all of them, okay? So reviews, we normally look at financial statement reviewing. Small companies want you to look at their financial statements. Sometimes you compare them, you put them together for them. Okay, that will come under compilation. 
um, interim financial review statements, state, uh, financial statement reviews, due diligence, um, like undertake investigations into their procurement practices, okay? Benchmarking and KPI review is quite difficult sometimes to do because KPIs can be qualitative, difficult to, to recognize, to measure, or even place values on. Then agreed upon procedures, we look at forensic audits. That one can also cut, cut across um, forensic audits when you realize some procurement malpractices in your organization, sometimes to verify insurance claims and grants. Recently, I read a story where somebody had actually defrauded the council because the person claimed to be sick and was taking so much disability allowance, using it on expensive trips until an, uh, um, until an agreed upon procedure was conducted. And they realized this person is a woman, has actually uh, falsified claims that she, she's sick, she's, she's disabled, and only for them to find her working her dog. And she's been doing that for over 30 years and, and lots of money has been taken from the council and she, she was due to be prosecuted, taking it on expensive holidays. So it is agreed upon procedures that will usually um, bring out some of these, these items. It could also be a forensic audit. Now, due diligence investigations on acquisitions also occur when there is an M&A, emergency and acquisitions. Like I said, compilations could be preparing the accounts for the clients preparing tax computations. There are audits, most, I shouldn't even say there are, most audit firms in good standing will always have their advisory section. Um, some call it advisory. Um, when I was in KPMG, we call it advisory. And this advisory says section actually does some of this account preparation, tax computations, um, review of financial statements. Sometimes they even take up the role of uh, preparing their payroll and, and recruitment hiring processes for them. So it, audit firms are equipped with the technical know-how to do this, except that they must be careful not to uh, bring in any issue of conflict of interest. So the, 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 let me use KPMG, for example. KPMG cannot go in and prepare the accounts for, for let's say, HSBC. And then... For, the audit section of KPMG goes to audit the same HSBC's prepared financial statement. That, that would be conflict of interest, okay? In that case, it's like a brother auditing his, his cousin. It's, it's not, there will always be some, some ethical issues there. All right. Now, the level of assurance, like I said, we have two. Reasonable, where we want to prove that there's sufficient appropriate evidence to conclude that the subject matter which has been prepared complies with all criteria set out. If it's a country-specific gap that we want to compare against, we have to write it off. We have to tick it off to show that, yes, there's enough sufficient appropriate evidence to conclude that the firm has prepared the accounts in line with that country-specific gap or an international financial reporting standard. Limited assurance deals with where we have sufficient evidence to decide that the subject is plausible. So negative assurance reports will be based on limited testing, like review engagements, okay? Now, I would like you to look at where then does positive assurance reports come on? Is it on, on extensive testing? And which kind of engagements fall under this? You have to look at for this, okay? Now, for agreed upon procedures and compilation assignments, there is nothing like an assurance which we provide on them, so. Prepare it for us, and you are not really giving any assurance on them. Okay, now look at these differences between the levels of assurance. I was saying look at positive and then um, negative reports. But let's look at this. Um, it gives us some, some hints on what I, I've asked you to look at. So assurance engagements. The level of assurance normally reasonable, like an audit. But for the limited assurance engagement or review engagement, there's what we call limited level of assurance provided, okay? Don't, don't confuse yourself too much with what is limited. It is limited from the English word limited. What is reasonable? It is the same as reasonable. We want you to add common knowledge, common sense that yes, it's reasonable. I didn't do everything, but I think it is reasonable. To a very great extent, it represents a true and fair view. Limited because it is limited. 
it is, is, is constricted to a certain level. We didn't go beyond, okay? All right. Now, the wording of opinion in assurance engagements are normally the, the positive ones, okay? And then that of limited will be the negative. So you, you normally hear, I'll give you another example, a typical example of the wording. You normally hear it represents in all material respects a true and fair view. That's a positive wording. But you normally say, we have no reason to believe that these books or these records do not comply with the, that is a negative assurance, okay? Um, level of work undertaken by assurance engagement, we can look at test of compliance, we substantive testing of the details, internal control reviews, okay? We, we do also, if at the level of internal control review, realize that it is robust, it is strong, it's efficient, it's being implemented, we may limit the level of substantive testing. You ask me, what is this guy talking about substantive and container control test? We'll come to that. Typically, what we are saying is that, look at internal controls, which I believe you understand. Is it efficient? Is it working? Is it strong enough to curtail any misstatements, any fraud and errors? If it's strong, then do a little testing. I mean, I mean the calculations, the computations, the vouching. Do a little, that's a substantive testing, okay? Um, the level of work undertaken under review engagement, we normally do analytical procedures, speak to the management, get some information from them, draw a conclusion, okay? Evidence requirements under the assurance engagement is high. You need to get all the evidence on all the management assertions which have been given. Sometimes you go outside of the management to talk to independent parties third parties, the banks, the, 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 the debtors, the creditors, okay, the loan providers, talk to them. And the review engagement, no, no evidence is right. Management can give you everything. Do your performance uh, analytics and that's it. We normally report to the members, the shareholders, let me put it that way, um, or the annual general meeting. That's where you see the audit reports being, being reported or being provided. Under limited or review engagement, you report to the management, not to the shareholders. Okay. All right. No, so under review engagement, like I said, we work is done. And here normally we, we want to understand the client, the company, the accounting systems. To what extent does management's judgment affect the work being done? What are the materiality of the balances and the figures represented? Are they big enough? Sometimes we ignore materiality under review engagement. Okay, we, we ignore materiality under review engagement. The procedures are normally based on inquiries, normally talk to management. Sometimes they will allow you to talk to the staff, okay? But normally not outside the organization. Their board minutes will be given to you, review them, check, do your analytical reviews, some year-on-year comparisons, some ratio analytics, ratio analysis, find meanings, okay? Let them under, uh, explain them to you, okay? Normally, that's what we find. So under analytical reviews, like I said, you can do year-on-year -year comparison of the financial statements against even their budget or forecast. Look at any variances, ask for any reasons, okay? Any relationships that you think could confirm a particular pattern, ask, probe, probe further, Okay, and let them explain. Sometimes you want to compare to the industry averages. Okay, so the typical ratio analysis, gross profit percentage, net profit margin, the profitability ratios, you can conduct a liquidity ratio, look at the cash conversion cycle, the, the current ratio, the quick, um, quick ratio or acid test ratio. Okay, look at the um, turnover ratios like uh, uh, all the, we can say the working capital ratios, okay. Some call it, yes, some call it working capital ratio. So the inventory turnover days, the, the receivable uh, days, the payable days, okay. Check them, okay. Against even the gearing ratios, go into um, solvency, short-term solvency, long-term solvency, and then do all those ratios. See reasons why these ratios are changing. And of course, you can also go on to, to undertake inspection of over age receivables. Uh, why, why are we having so much bad debts? Why are customers taking long to pay? Ask management to explain. Maybe they have some poor cash collection system or invoicing system. 
and then you provide some good um, feedback to them, all right? Other procedures you can also undertake under this review engagement will be inquiries of major, effect, major matters which could affect the company. Assuming there is a new finance want to acquire a new loan, you want float shares or bonds, um, any mergers and acquisitions hanging on their necks. Usually you see companies when they are about being liquidated or going into administration, they will ask the audit firms to come on board to review their, their books for them or to undertake some due diligence procedures or review engagement before the company runs out, runs out of business. If a company wants to undertake a major capital expenditure like expansion of their business operations, they could call on these guys, uh, the audit firms, okay, not really coming to do an audit, to come and undertake the reviews, okay? Again, other areas where they could ask for review engagements could be like um, looking at impairments of the assets, provisions that they've done, any contingent assets, contingent liabilities, any post-balance sheet events or related party transactions that could affect them, okay? Any specific disclosures in the areas of, let's say, green accounting, sustainability reporting, they could ask these guys, these experts to come on board to undertake these reviews. Then they come in with their technical know-how, they do a clean job, and they provide some recommendations to the company. Like I said, you could review minutes of the board or any other um, committee which has been taxed with a particular activity. Any uncorrected misstatements, which maybe the auditors may have passed on for you to adjust, you could, you could review them and then provide some good recommendations to them. Any underlying records, okay? And then management representations on key issues, okay? Management representation is, is, is key. Normally, it's a letter the management will write. They will tell you everything about the organization. We expect them to disclose everything, even if they have any issues of fraud, any sanctions, any activities, any pending legal um, litigations hanging on their necks. They have to disclose everything. So if there's a legal issue hanging on their necks, maybe a, an employee got hurt in the, in the act of working, and they are having issues with, with resolving a workman's compensation scheme, they could ask you to come on and then help them to, to resolve this. It could fall under contingencies. It could also fall under management representations. All right. There is interim financial information which firms could be asked to review. Um, this is quite tricky. Sometimes we say it is not an audit, but if the company has very large operations, and that's what we see normally with the big companies, HSBC, Tesco, those large clients, they normally will require an audit of the interim financial statement, not even a review, an, an audit. When I worked with KPMG, I remember Stanchart is very big, running through the whole of the country. We go in six months before the year end, no, nine months, uh, we go in three months before the year end. That means they, they would have operated for nine months. And we prepare, we review their audit for nine months. But we call it interim audit. And then three months after their year end, we're going to do the final audit. It makes life easy because you would have already audited nine months or six months. And you're just doing the extra three. It makes life easy or extra six, okay? So like I said, it may not be required to be audited, but it depends on the terms of engagement the company has signed with the auditors. And we publish, we give them interim reports, interim adjustments for them to pass before the year ends. But again, again, a company could ask you to come and review their interim financial statements based on which you could issue a negative assurance or limited assurance on that, okay? We also have to undertake due diligence. Normally it's a fact-finding exercise where we carry out investigations into some activities. Um, maybe vouching investment portfolios of clients. It's a due diligence. It could also fall under an agreed upon procedure where they agreed, that, listen, check, check, check this for us and, and see whether the investment portfolio we have on our books or for our clients, reflect, reflects the right thing. We had a case where um, 
in, a, in an organization, they realize that their products keep getting missing, but they don't know where it's going through. So they called on the auditors, KPMG, let me say that. And we went in to do a fact-finding exercise and realized that the staff actually collude with the security personnel to, to siphon the product out. Okay, so that's a due diligence activity. We give them um, some recommendations on how to seal those gaps. Now, it can be an assurance assignment, like I said, or an agreed upon procedure with no assurance. Okay, so either way, it could fall under an assurance engagement. But in our case, what I what I personally experienced, the due diligence procedure, one was an agreed upon procedure where we validated the treasury bills investment of various clients. No assurance given. And then, of course, we give them some recommendations, okay? And then we had this fact-finding exercise to see what is happening with the products getting missing. It wasn't an assurance engagement. It was also more of an agreed upon procedure, but we still give them some good recommendations so that they could seal those gaps. So we gather the data, we will verify with, with management or with vendors. Okay, we, we also assert, assess their liabilities and assets and try to look at any risk assessment procedures of the company, any internal control systems instituted, okay? And then again, we will look at identifying post-acquisition benefits. There are some of the tax you undertake under due diligence, um, synergies, economies of scale, okay? The list is not exhaustive. It could include more, okay? Like I said, vouching or validating of investment portfolios, um, also trying to look at how a newly designed internal control system could be robust enough to withstand the test of time. <clears throat> in the next three slides, I'll try and end, then I take the next session, okay? So what about the takeover? Sometimes I'm not performing as, as required. I want to hand over. I'm not making profits. I just read in the news that uh, Cineworld is trying to fold up. Maybe some, some other company will take over. Some of the due diligence activities under, undertaken during an M and A situation, mergers and acquisition situation, or a takeover situation, include comparing their performance to industry standards and trends to see how the company is growing or whether it is slowing down. Also, to gather officer and information, um, gather information on the director's pay, officer's pay, their employee share based schemes or share share based options in, in, in line with IAS 19 employee benefits sometimes, and also try to look at the history, the competence of the staff. There was a case when there is this IT manager holding some good qualifications only for an, um, a due diligence to be taken to realize that this guy came into position with fake certificates. So you have to also check whether those who are holding positions of power really have what it takes to run the, the, the company, okay? I don't want to mention the name of the client or the audit firm which did it. It was quite serious. And this was quite a significant organization in the heart of the country, okay? And, and the IT manager, director knew nothing about IT yet. He was put there possibly because of political connections. Other things we could also undertake would be review the, the articles of incorporation, articles to um, to commence business, their charters, their contracts, licenses, trademarks, um, good uh, patents, okay? Name them, their brands, their franchises. You could review those ones. Also assess their financial reports in, in terms of their tax returns, their annual reports, what is the strength of their internal controls? Like I mentioned earlier, could be one of them. Review the assets, who owns what? How are they disposed of? Do they, are they auctioned sometimes to the same owners, those who use the assets, the vehicles? At what price, reasonably, or just to, to induce them? Okay, you, you scratch my back, I scratch my back, it happens. You could also look at um, synergies and benefits, which results from acquisitions, um, business plan review, financial forecast, agreement with key stakeholders, 
and insurance related documents. We'll review all those things, okay? Once again, I know it is quite comprehensive within the first four weeks, but please keep up the speed. You'll be fine, okay? Now, compilation assignments still falling under agreed upon procedures. It cuts across the agreed upon procedure. So it could be an agreed upon, it could be a compilation assignment. Now, normally with agreed upon procedures, we want to find a fact. We'll carry out a particular contract or engagement or, uh, yeah, let me use the word contract, which the company had engaged with the, with the client, with the auditor. So we go in, we do what we want to do. We find the fact, report to them per the terms of engagement and we report, give you some good feedback. But a compilation assignment normally is, is, is done by smaller companies. They don't want you to give us any assurance over the books. Sometimes you don't even give any recommendation. Come help us put this together. Okay, uh, one, we, we, we're struggling. Our accountant is not too good. He's new from school. He cannot put a comprehensive income statement together. Come and help us to prepare our financial statements. No assurance given, no recommendation. Prepare it and leave it and go. Charge your fees and go. In either case, you need a letter of engagement to set out the basis of the agreement, okay? So that we know what we are entitled to do. We don't go beyond what we have been asked to do, okay? I'm gonna end here with a direct reporting engagement and that will be the next um session okay all right so we'll come back to direct reporting engagements and then we'll look at that one all right friends i'll see you in the part two of the assurance engagements bye for now